Welcome to a new mini series called Localhost 1000 where I will document the process of building and launching a web app. This is my attempt to putting something out there that I built for real users to use and hopefully have something good come out of it. So three months back, I had this idea to build a lead code version of a platform to practice programming in Apex. So for those who don't know, Apex is a backend language that's used in Salesforce and it only compiles and deploys to a Salesforce cloud instance. So this is why if you're going to coding challenges platforms like LeadCode, HackerRank or something similar, you won't see Apex as a programming language option. So when I had this idea end of last year, I immediately had to validate it. So I went online and found out a lot of people in the community were already asking for this. So I found a couple of questions on Stack Exchange, Reddit and other forums, people asking for a similar lead code like platform to practice Apex coding. And most of the replies were along the lines, such a platform doesn't exist or they were just forwarding them to the traditional documentation or other Salesforce learning resources. So I thought to myself, why can't I build one myself? So I went to Google to see if such a platform already exists. Maybe people just didn't know about them. And that turns out to be true. One month into my build, I found out there are two or three similar web apps, but they're not really well marketed. Because on Google, I searched for all the keywords like Apex coding platform, Apex coding like platform for lead code, practice Apex coding, nothing came up. So that told me a few things. Either these platforms are not marketed well, they're not very well optimized for SEO and people just didn't know about them. So I thought to myself, if I could fill all this void and come up with a better product from what's already out there, I could be potentially the lead code of Salesforce. So I've been coding this web app for the past two months now. And in this video, I wanna share my progress and the things I learned along the way. I'll talk about the idea, the tech stack I chose, and competition and most importantly the reason behind why I choose to pursue this idea even after I found out there are two other similar web apps out there and at the end I want to show you the scrappy MVP that I built over the past two months. So the idea essentially is to have a platform for Salesforce developers to practice Apex. And the most compelling part for me was the app only has to focus on a niche group of developers. I don't have to appeal to all developers, but only Salesforce developers. That takes off a lot of weight and I only have to focus on one thing. The main problem I'm trying to solve here is Apex as a language doesn't compile outside of Salesforce environment. So all I needed to figure out was a way to compile user written code in a Salesforce development environment. So my app will be acting as a bridge that bridges the gap between the code editor on the web and compilation on the backend that is routed to Salesforce. Tech stack. My goal was to build an MVP in less than three months. I wanted a working model, nothing fancy, nothing that looks amazing, just the core functionality. With that in mind, what other better tech stack other than Mern or Node.js on the backend to quickly whip up something like this? I had some experience with Node.js before, so I chose Node.js and Express on the backend and MongoDB as a database for now. I'm not sure if I will stick with MongoDB in the long run. I'm in more favor of a SQL database, but for now, I just have a user sign in on the website. For the MVP, it doesn't really matter. And for the front end, I am considering between React and Angular. I'm in more favor of React because I have some experience working with React, but now for MVP, I'm not even thinking about it. I'm just using a template engine EJS on the front end just to get the functionality working. So now I wanna talk a little bit about competition. So when you have an idea and start working on it, it's possible that someone else had a similar idea, but instead of getting demotivated by it, I saw that as a positive. If you think about it, you know how Uber, Lyft, here in Europe, Bolt, all of them exist. How Uber Eats, Deliveroo, all of these companies exist at the same time. Competition is good, it just validates the idea. At least that's what I was reading everywhere. Having competition validates your idea, 
plus it gives you the opportunity to do something different from others. So once I started building, I came up with the name Forsco.dev and I bought the domain. Few weeks into the build, I went online to see if there is a similar website out there with the same name Force Code. And guess what? Then I started digging even more and I found another similar web app with the same exact idea. I was demotivated at first, to be honest, but then I started asking myself a few questions. If it was very well known, why didn't it show up in any of my initial Google search results? Maybe it's poor SEO, poor marketing, but these are all the areas which I can improve in my own app. It's possible that I'm biased towards my idea, but then I ask myself, how are people still asking for such a platform when all of these web apps are already out there? If someone wants to practice coding challenges, they all know they can go to lead code, hacker rank, algo expert, or something similar, but there's no such go-to place for practicing Apex coding challenges. So I thought maybe I can be that one. And at the end, the most important question was, what am I losing by building this? Virtually nothing. I can come up with a different name and buy a different domain, but the experience and knowledge you gain from building something from A to Z and deploying it online for real users to actually use is gonna give me much more valuable experience and knowledge than anything that I'm trying to compare and contrast to. Plus, I don't have to really overthink this. Once the application is ready, I can always think of ways to stand out or be different to what's already out there. So that's all I have to say on this topic of competition. Maybe you're on a similar boat where you have an idea that you want to build and you found out there are similar ones already built. But instead of getting demotivated, think about the ways how you can be unique. Think about the learning and experience that comes from the process of building something like this would give you. And I think that's way more valuable than getting stuck on something uh, very early on. Now, that's said and done. Let me just show you the MVP I have built so far real quick. So I'm gonna jump into my laptop here. So this is the landing page. You have a sign in option to log in with Salesforce. This will direct you to the login page of Salesforce where you can connect your dev org or development org of Salesforce to my application. And there's also an option to sign up here. So you could sign up as a new user. And I have few validations running here, nothing on the front end side. All of it is server side rendering now, nothing on the front end. So if I just put a random name, a user that already exists, I should get some validation here saying that username already exists. And let me see if I put something random, let's say YouTube and I press sign up, I get password can help contain username. So I have a couple of validation running here on the front end. So I'm actually signed in. So let me just show you the core functionality of how it works. So I'm gonna go to the code editor. So here I have a basic problem that loads up with the boilerplate code. So the problem is write a function that takes two integers as parameters and returns the sum of it. So if you have practiced any coding challenges on lead code or hacker rank, they always preload your editor with boilerplate code. So I also did the same. This is something I might change in the future, but I'm just keeping it now because it works as of now, I might change this in the future. So in the boilerplate code here, you can see I have a, a function called find some that returns nothing. So there are three different scenarios that could happen as a user who writes code. One is the code fails to compile. That means there might be a missing syntax. There might be something wrong in the written code. The second one is writing a wrong solution. That means test cases would fail. And the third one is to write the perfect solution that so that all the test cases passes. So let's go through each scenario so in the first one i'm gonna write a wrong syntax so here the function is expecting an integer as a return type and i'm not returning anything i'm just returning semicolon so if i submit this i'm expecting to get a compilation error so i submitted this missing return statement required return type is integer so that works perfectly fine 
So now I want to test the wrong side of things. I'm going to write the wrong solution and see what I get. So the function is expecting a sum, but I'm going to return a minus b and see how it takes. So I'm going to submit it. So now I can see that the test cases actually failed. So test case one was input was three, four, the expert was seven and actual was minus one. Test case two failed, expected was the input was minus two, five expected was three and actual was minus seven actually the test case three passed because the input was zero zero so the sum of zero zero and the difference of zero is the same so that test case specifically passed and all the other twos fail which is a good test now let's see what happens if i actually give a solid solution a plus b a plus b should be the right solution so i'm expecting uh, this to pass so all test cases passed so those are the three scenarios that I have covered so far. There can be many more scenarios, but this is just the core functionality of the working MVP. So that's all the core functionality I have got working so far on my web app. And my plan for the future is to add a few more problems and make sure all the user details are saved correctly to the database, including the problems that they solved including the details of the Salesforce development org that they got connected to so that next time they sign in, they can get back all the saved results of their previous solved problems. And also they can easily sign back to their previous development org. My plan for this localhost 1000 web series is to share my learnings and progress building this web app. And hopefully you guys can take something valuable out of this and get inspired to build something or maybe just replicate uh, ideas to start something new. So if you have any suggestions for the names of this app, leave them in the comments below. And if you're interested to be one of the first one to check out this web app when it comes out, I will leave a link in the description for you to sign up by the time this video comes out. And also, if you're working on something interesting, give a shout in the comments. I'll check them out and I would love to learn what you guys are building. Until then, Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.